Ever wondered why hurricanes can't cross the equator? It seems like a riddle, doesn't it? Let's embark on a fascinating journey into the world of meteorology to unravel this mystery. Hurricanes, also known as cyclones or typhoons depending on where you are in the world, are some of the most powerful and destructive weather phenomena on Earth. These swirling, tempestuous storms can span over hundreds of miles and pack winds with speeds reaching up to 155 miles per hour. Now here's a curious fact, despite their immense size and strength, you'll never see a hurricane cross the equator. That's right. While these giants of the weather world can cause havoc across large swaths of the globe, there's an invisible line they seem unable to cross. From the balmy Caribbean to the tropical Pacific, hurricanes are known to wreak havoc, but they give the equator a wide berth. What makes this even more intriguing is that the conditions along the equator seem perfect for hurricanes. Warm waters, a key ingredient for hurricane formation, are abundant here. Yet the equator remains a no-hurricane zone. It's a question that has puzzled scientists and weather enthusiasts alike for years. But like any good mystery, there's a twist. The equator's immunity to hurricanes isn't due to some magical force field, or because hurricanes have an aversion to the middle of the Earth. It's all down to the physics of our rotating planet. The key to understanding this enigma lies in a principle you might have heard of before, the Coriolis effect. It's this effect that plays a pivotal role in the paths hurricanes take and the areas they can and can't reach. So, why don't hurricanes cross the equator? Well, the answer lies in something called the Coriolis effect. Intrigued? Stay tuned. So, what is this Coriolis effect and how does it prevent hurricanes from crossing the equator? The Coriolis effect, named after French mathematician Gaspar Gustave de Coriolis, is a fascinating phenomenon that plays a significant role in our daily weather. But before we dive into the details, let's start with a simple question. Have you ever noticed how water spirals down the drain? That's a small, everyday glimpse of the Coriolis effect in action. The Earth rotates and it does so faster at the equator than at the poles. This rotation influences the path of any moving object on the Earth's surface, including currents of wind and water. It's like being on a spinning carousel and trying to toss a ball straight ahead. From your perspective, the ball would curve, right? That's because you, like the Earth, are rotating. However, the Coriolis effect doesn't just cause things to curve, it also determines the direction of the curve. In the Northern Hemisphere, the Earth's rotation causes moving objects to turn to the right. That's why weather systems like hurricanes and cyclones spin counterclockwise in the North. Flip that around for the Southern Hemisphere, where the Coriolis effect causes things to veer to the left, resulting in clockwise spinning storms. Now, imagine a bullet fired from the North Pole straight towards the equator. As it travels, the Earth beneath it is moving faster and faster. But the bullet, once fired, doesn't speed up with the Earth. It keeps its original speed. This makes it seem as though the bullet is curving to the right when, in fact, it's the Earth moving faster beneath it. So the Coriolis effect is essentially the Earth's rotation causing moving objects to appear as if they're curving right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. But what happens at the equator, where the Earth's rotation speed is at its fastest? That's the curious case we're about to unravel. Let's find out. The equator, it turns out, is a kind of hurricane-free zone. But why is that? It all boils down to something we've just learned about, the Coriolis effect. This phenomenon, which causes moving objects to deviate due to the Earth's rotation, is actually zero at the equator. Now what does this imply? The Coriolis effect is the invisible hand that stirs the hurricane pot, so to speak. It's the force that causes the rotation necessary for a hurricane to form and maintain its structure. Without this crucial rotation, a mass of storm clouds is just that, a storm, not a hurricane. Imagine it this way, you're trying to spin a top, but there's no force to start the initial spin. The top might wobble a bit, but it won't do that delightful mesmerizing dance that we associate with spinning tops. Similarly, without the Coriolis effect, a storm can't transform into the swirling menace that we know as a hurricane. So, what happens when a hurricane already formed and spinning furiously approaches the equator? Well, as it gets closer and closer, the Coriolis effect gets weaker and weaker. Remember, it's zero at the equator. The hurricane, deprived of the force that was maintaining its rotation, starts to lose its structure. It's like a dancer losing their rhythm mid-performance. The hurricane's winds slow, its rotation unravels, and it eventually falls apart. 
That's why the areas near the equator are generally safe from the destructive wrath of hurricanes. It's not that storms don't occur here, they do, and they can be quite intense. But without the Coriolis effect to transform these storms into hurricanes, they lack the sustained violent winds and the distinctive spiral shape that hurricanes are known for. So without the Coriolis effect, hurricanes simply cannot form or survive at the equator. But there's more to this story. There are other elements at play that influence where hurricanes can and can't form, and we'll dive into those in the next segment. While the Coriolis effect is crucial, it's not the only factor keeping hurricanes at bay from the equator. Indeed, Mother Nature has a few more tricks up her sleeve. One of these is the lack of temperature variation near the equator. Hurricanes thrive on the temperature differences between the warm ocean surface and the cooler upper atmosphere. This contrast helps create the energy that fuels these monstrous storms. However, near the equator, the temperature difference is minimal. The uniformly warm temperatures from the ocean surface to the upper atmosphere do not provide the necessary contrast for hurricanes to form and intensify. Furthermore, the equator serves as a natural barrier against hurricanes due to the presence of vertical wind shear. This phenomenon refers to the change in wind speed or direction with height in the atmosphere. Picture it as a kind of atmospheric friction. Vertical wind shear disrupts the structure of a developing storm, essentially tearing it apart before it can grow into a full-blown hurricane. Near the equator, where wind shear is high, this disruption is so significant that it effectively prevents hurricanes from forming. Additionally, hurricanes require a large body of warm ocean water to fuel their growth. Though the equator has warm waters, it lacks the vast expanses found at higher latitudes. This, in turn, limits the potential for hurricane development. In essence, it's a combination of factors at play. The Coriolis effect, minimal temperature variation, high vertical wind shear, and the lack of large expanses of warm ocean water. Each one contributes to creating an environment that's inhospitable for hurricanes, right at the equator. So, there you have it. Hurricanes can't cross the equator due to the lack of Coriolis effect and other inhibiting factors. It's a fascinating example of how our planet's natural forces shape our weather systems.